So last week, I said we were going to get into the agentic AI game, and that's what we've done. We've looked into Anthropic's Model Context Protocol, MCP, which is an open standard for building agentic systems. And we've used MCP to build a proof of concept, a prototype that plays chess. So let me give you a demo of it now. So we're using Claude, which is Anthropic's large language model. You can install it as a desktop client, which I've got here. Now this is vanilla Claude. You can do the normal LLM things. You can give it a query. It'll get some information. It'll reason around some of that information as well. But it can't actually do anything with that. It doesn't have any agency. It doesn't have any tools. So what we need to do now is give Claude that agency. So you can see on the left here, we've got this code repository that we've built, the Fuzzy Labs chess agent. And there's some setup here, which I won't go through all the details of, but what I will do is, this, is run this final command. And what this command does is that enables the tools within Claude so it can go and play chess. So we'll run that command now. And now that's added the configuration into Claude. Now to make that C effects, we've just got to restart Claude. So we'll quit this and then restart it. And now you can see that Claude's back up and it's got this little hammer here with a number eight next to it. And the eight is the number of tools it has available to it. And these are the tools that we've put into our MCP server. So things like create game, end game, get the status of the board, log into chess and make a move. So Claude now has the agency to do what it needs to do. So let's, let's do it. So I'm saying, let's play chess, create a game, log in and wait for my next instruction and return the URL of the game so I can see what's going on. So it's asking me for authorization if it can run the tools. So I'm gonna say, yes, you can log in. I'm gonna say, yes, you can create a game. And it's given me the URL as I've asked it. So let's click on this so we can see that here. Now what we've got here is an agent playing against another bot. So it's AI against AI, if you like. So Lychess has a bot you can play against called Stockfish and it has different levels. We're playing against level three here. And Stockfish thinks it's playing against a person. And I have the board here. I can make my move if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let the agent make the next move. So I'm going to tell it, make your move. So it asks for authorization if it can make the move. So what's interesting here is I said make your move before it knew what was going on with the board. And it's tried to make a move using the incorrect chess notation. I haven't told it which notation to use and it's guessed this move E4. Now that's technically not correct. It's had an error and it said actually let me try the proper format. And it's also figured out by getting the board representation that it's black and that white's made its first move. So it's now making its first move as black and it's used the correct notation. And rather than saying E4, it's actually changed its mind. It's saying, let's go to E5. Let's move the pawn from E7 to E5. And it's given a description. Now this, this description, this is from Claude's knowledge of chess. So Claude is a huge model trained on the internet, including chess information, and it knows about chess. And I'm, at this point, I'm gonna let it go and play the game. So I'm gonna say, continue to play chess until it has ended. So you can see now it's playing chess autonomously. It's getting the status of the board. It's describing back the chess strategy. You can see here it says things like maintains our presence in the center, challenging our center pawns. So what this is showing is that I've not told it how to play chess. Claude, the large language model, understands chess natively. And I've given it the tools to be able to talk to lie chess, find out what's going on, on the board and be able to make a move. And that's it it's now playing by itself. And that's, that's pretty powerful. So as I said, it's a very simple application of Agentic AI, but it allows us to understand the mechanics of what's going on quite well. We created this in about a day and it's uncovered quite a lot of things. First of all, the cost. I've had to subscribe to Claude's pro version or plus version to get extra credits and tokens because every message we send to Claude actually has quite a lot of context because what we get back from the chess API is an ASCII representation of the chessboard and we're putting that back into Claude every time saying, here's the chessboard, what do you think? And the API calls back to LiChess have got quite a bit in there. So we run out of tokens. So there's quite a bit to look into there around how we manage the cost of this and, and optimize what we do with our agents. The other thing we wanna look at is the efficiency of them. How do we know that they're doing what we want them to do? Chess has a lot of possibilities in terms of outcome, 
But how do we manage that? How do we monitor it? And how do we know it's been effective? And the third thing is around security. We're giving this agent the ability to do things on our behalf. How do we know it's not doing something bad? How do we know it's not leaking our credentials? So there's a lot to dig into with this. And chess was just a demo. So we're going to park the chess example for now and come up with more of a real world use case, which allows us to go deeper into some of those research questions around productionizing agents. So if you're interested in learning more about agents, then keep following us and watching these videos. And if there's anything in particular that you're interested in that you'd like us to dig into, add a comment and we'll have a look. Thanks for your time.